So, shalom to everybody. Salam alaikum. Good morning, good afternoon, buenos dias. Uh, so nice to have you here with us also through the Zoom and also through Facebook. Um, we are happy to meet you again once a week. It's you know, it's like meeting the family once again and to see you. So thank you, thank you for joining. Um, from Shfaim, from Kibbutz Shfaim, at our Center for Agricultural Training Center, we are hosting you. We are here, Ora, Hello. my colleague, and my name is Evelyn Rosenthal. Um, and on behalf of Mashaf, the Israeli Agency for International Cooperation, we are so happy to welcome you to this third meeting of our series of conferences on challenges of agricultural development in arid lands. I don't know how many people are joining for the first time, but uh, for those who have been last time, la last Wednesday, uh, and heard Dr. Gutmann's lecture, we spoke about groundwater management in the Arava Valley. And in this third meeting, we are going back to the Arava Valley. Um, and today's lecture aims to share with you the experience of really making from a desert, uh, a green uh, valley and to see the desert blooming. I am very happy and very excited to introduce you to Mr. Joram Zvieli who is our lecture of today. Joram is a senior agronomist and extension officer. He works for the Rural Development and Extension Service of the Central and Northern Arava Tamar Research and Development Center. And I have to tell you that I am uh, really excited because I know Joram for more or less 30 years now. And I met Yoram for the first time in the Arava Valley when just arriving in Israel. I am a new immigrant from Argentina, I have to tell you. So I came to the Arava Valley for working in the R&D station and I joined Yoram in one of his experiments on uh, watermelons and I had to eat a lot of watermelons to prove if they are sweet or they are not sweet. <laughs> uh, so I am super pleased to invite Yoram but before before giving you the mic Yoram uh, I would like to tell everybody again uh, if you can open cameras it would be wonderful to see you, but don't forget that the camera is open, okay? Uh, please close mics and questions. You are invited to ask questions or comments through the chat. Um, and you should know the conference is being recorded and it will be uploaded on our YouTube page later. We will send you all the links for the YouTube page and Facebook and Instagram, etc. Okay, so having said this, Joram, the mic is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn, for uh, inviting me. Uh, I, uh, I work in the Arava region since uh, 1984. Uh, I, uh, I made uh, several posts along the way, 
extension service, uh, R&D, uh, forest trees, forestry, uh, and uh, I took a break uh, from the Arava and I, I went uh, on a mission um, for the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs. I was uh, five years in uh, Senegal and in development uh, project and uh, later on I, I came back to the Arava and all the time with uh, one leg with uh, extension service, uh, consulting to, uh, uh, to farmers and uh, research and uh, development, and rural development. Uh, from time to time, uh, I gave consultancy also to the UN, the USAID, uh, etc. And uh, here I am. Uh, Evelyn? Yes. Yeah, okay, so uh, I will uh, I will uh, start my uh, lecture. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Doug and uh, uh, first uh, the first lecture described the uh, Vulcani uh, the Vulcani uh, uh, Institute, the National Ag Agricultural Research Organization, uh, which is a uh, uh, celebrating this year the 19th uh, anniversary. Uh, some uh, 40 years ago, the Israeli government uh, got a decision uh, to enforce the agri-research uh, system by establishing regional uh, uh, R&D's uh, organization in the uh, periphery uh, all over uh, uh, the country. Uh, it took uh, uh, it took several years, and uh, now we can uh, uh, we can count uh, eight uh, regional R and D's uh, organization all over the country. Uh, so we can see from the north uh, down till the south of Arava. Uh, I work uh, daily in the central and northern. Uh, uh, Aravatamar uh, region in this area, uh, and uh, um, all my uh, examples uh, is uh, uh, with the background of the uh, central Arava uh, uh, region. Uh, the idea uh, behind uh, that process of uh, establishing uh, uh, peripheral organization uh, was to determine by the local board uh, together uh, with the farmers the, the local uh, agenda, uh, the uh, priority of uh, topics uh, according to the need of uh, each uh, region, and to uh, promote uh, better uh, promote better those uh, uh, subjects. Uh, if in the north it's, uh, it is important for the to the farmer to work on the apple trees, uh, and in the, the south, it is very important to work on the uh, issues of uh, regarding tomatoes. So in the central Arava, uh, we deal mainly with pepper, dates, melon, etc. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, research uh, with uh, uh, water issues. Uh, water quality, uh, working with saline water, uh, uh, etc. Uh, the regional uh, RDs are uh, being uh, financed uh, partly by the Ministry of uh, uh, Agriculture, uh, the Jewish National Fund, uh, which is uh, an NGO, and uh, other uh, sources. And uh, every year uh, we, there are committees that fix the uh, the priorities of uh, uh, the research uh, uh, topics, and uh, we try to raise the fund for those uh, 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 subjects. Uh, there is also a, a continuous collaboration uh, between uh, between the regional uh, 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 systems. Uh, we share information. We work together uh, with our neighbors. 
Uh, and uh, also we work uh, together uh, with the uh, national uh, research uh, organization and uh, universities. There is a, a basic research in agriculture, a lot of basic research in the Faculty of Agriculture and uh, other uh, academic uh, uh, researcher in, uh, in the other university. And this is all for the benefit of uh, uh, the uh, agriculture uh, and uh, the farmers uh, in uh, Israel. Uh, in the coming uh, uh, hour, I would like to go uh, uh, deeper uh, in uh, describing the challenges of uh, the rural and uh, agricultural development uh, in the Raba Valley. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, we'll refer mainly to the central part uh, and the uh, innovation of uh, the Arava R&D uh, and the, sorry, the involvement of the uh, Arava R&D in uh, this uh, uh, development. Uh, let's go uh, for the beginning. Uh, so, State of Israel, New State, 1948. Um, during the first, uh, the first uh, decade, uh, most of the Israeli population settled along the coast. Uh, and uh, the Negev, uh, which is uh, about half of, uh, half of Israel, remained relatively non-populated. Uh, 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 David Ben-Gurion, uh, the first, uh, uh, the first uh, uh, prime minister uh, had the vision uh, to make uh, the Negev desert uh, blooming. And uh, uh, following his uh, division, uh, he took uh, several years. And uh, as uh, you can see, uh, the villages uh, uh, started one after one. And if we take all the Arava Valley uh, from the, the Dead Sea to the Red Sea. Uh, so uh, uh, 2020, there are about 60,000 people. Uh, the city of Elat, which uh, sits on the, the bank of, uh, uh, of the Red Sea, is about uh, uh, 45,000 people. And uh, all, uh, all the rest, all this valley, about 15,000 uh, 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 people in the 18 agricultural villages, five uh, community villages, uh, and uh, there are uh, three regional councils. Uh, Tamar, this is uh, in the north, near the Dead Sea, central Arava, where I'm uh, sitting and walking, and have a lot. Uh, this is in the south. Uh, the, the regional council of uh, Hevel Elot, it is uh, Kibbutzim. Um, and all the rest at Central Arava in Tamar, it is uh, mainly, mainly Moshevim. Um, I hope that uh, you know the difference between Kibbutz and Moshev. Uh, if not, I can say in two words. Uh, kibbutz, if we have... Uh, 100 families. Uh, so a kibbutz is uh, one economic unit. And if we go to a moshav with 100 families, it is 100 uh, economy uh, separate units. Uh, this is the basic uh, difference. And uh, following uh, this uh, uh, difference, uh, when we go to a kibbutz, uh, we speak about a very big uh, plot. And Moshav, uh, each uh, farmer has uh, about five hectares. He can grow whatever he wants. Uh, flowers, uh, vegetables, uh, mango, date trees, and this is a is, uh, is, uh, uh, unit. Uh, we, we can uh, have a look uh, how it looks like from, uh, from the, the upper space. So look at uh, Israel, Israel, the peninsula of Sinai in Egypt. So uh, the, the density of the population in, in the center of Israel 
Or let's say Israel altogether, the average is 400 people per square kilometer. Uh, the density in the, in the center of Israel is 25,000 people per square kilometer. But uh, when we go to the Negev, it is 1.5 only. Uh, so it is still uh, uh, very much uh, not, uh, not uh, a crowd. Uh, as I said, I, uh, I will focus uh, mainly in the central Arava. Uh, so we can see here the, the map of Israel and central Arava. And it is that uh, small part. Uh, it is uh, the area of the regional council of Arava. It's uh, about 150,000 uh, 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 hectare. Uh, it is uh, six percent of the Israel all Israel uh, uh, area. Uh, of uh, that uh, uh, area, uh, about only three thousand hectare is uh, cultivated. There is a big area of a, a nature reserve. Uh, in the villages in the central Arava, there are four hundred uh, uh, people uh, residents. Uh, uh, one one uh, one thousand families, and uh, most of the most of the uh, people who live in the area uh, make their living of uh, uh, agriculture. So, if uh, uh, we look a little bit in the history, uh, Arava in the sixties, the first agricultural villages uh, uh, founded as uh, military units. Uh, those of you who come from Kenya, or well, in Kenya, I know that in Kenya there is a, also there is a kind of a youth movement that uh, uh, deal also with uh, making agriculture. So it is uh, more or less the same. Uh, it's called Nachal. Uh, so after uh, uh, one, two, several years of uh, establishing the uh, the village as a uh, um, it's a base camp, it uh, switched to a kibbutz uh, or uh, a moshav. And uh, the pioneers started uh, growing. Uh, in the beginning, uh, we can see the machinery was uh, very simple. Uh, they used uh, horses and they mules to, uh, to walk the, the soil. Um, this is the time when uh, the, the drip irrigation just, just uh, arrived, or well, the beginning was with, uh, with uh, sprinklers. Uh, we can see photos of uh, uh, harvesting uh, uh, tomato, open field uh, tomatoes, and then sorting the tomatoes, or uh, collecting uh, the, the onions. Um, later on, uh, Farmers in the Arava started uh, growing flowers uh, for, uh, for export. And uh, uh, the first uh, pepper food that was exported from the Arava, it was in 1970s. Uh, <coughs> Professor uh, Doug mentioned uh, the challenges uh, uh, that uh, we have uh, when we walk in the when we walk when we live in the uh, in the Arava, uh, Dr. Gutman also uh, gave a very wide uh, description about uh, about uh, the the water system, the water problem and challenges. Uh, I will uh, refer a little bit uh, to the water to try to complete uh, maybe some questions that remain open after the lecture of uh, Dr. Gutman. Uh, and I will uh, go deeper to explain the problem of, uh, of uh, soil uh, and the climate. Uh, what are the, uh, the limiting factors that, uh, uh, due to the climate and what is the relative advantage also due to the, uh, due to the uh, climate. Uh, I will speak a little bit in the end of the lecture. I will speak about uh, the rentability uh, and uh, uh, 
uh, the cost of production, the cost of uh, uh, labor, the problem with marketing. All this I will try to, to do uh, within the, uh, this hour. Uh, uh, what we see, it is a typical uh, landscape uh, in, the, in the Arava. Uh, the Arava Valley, uh, years ago, uh, the Jordanian part and the Israeli part, it was one plateau. And uh, following the Syrian-African break, uh, the valley uh, started uh, uh, to... Uh, um, we, we, we found that the, the valley of the Arava was created. And uh, for uh, uh, thousands of years, since the climate was different at that time, uh, big rain in the east uh, brought a lot of sedimentation with the flood and slowly, slowly the valley of the Arava became full with sediments. Uh, that's why the, since each, uh, each uh, uh, flood it came from another direction or maybe 1,000 1, years, 2,000 years later, it was from different uh, source. So we find in the proximity, we find uh, soil, different kinds of soil, very much not uniform. Uh, when we want uh, to extend uh, the, the land, we have more, uh, more uh, families, more farmers. So we need to, to break our head how to do it with such a, such a, a, a land. Uh, <coughs> The Arabic, uh, the Arabic uh, name to describe uh, uh, soil in the, in the desert is a uh, Hamada. Uh, we can call it uh, also rex soil. Those of you who can read the Arabic, this is Hamada. Uh, for the local uh, soil uh, in the desert, it is uh, uh, very much uh, in a fertile uh, a problem of uh, High salinity, and I already mentioned the, the problem with uh, uh, uni uh, it's not uniform. Uh, Professor Doug mentioned the very high uh, evaporation. Uh, he said that it is 2,700, so I would like to correct it is, uh, it is uh, 3,200, it is uh, a little more. Uh, millimeters that evaporate uh, uh, per year. Uh, on, the, uh, on the eastern side of the Arava, we have uh, the border with uh, our neighbors, but uh, since, uh, uh, since, uh, um, thousand, uh, since 1993, uh, we are in, uh, in the peace treaty with the Kingdom of uh, Jordan. Uh, so you can see this is the landscape on the other side of the border and in the, in the other side of the border uh, we can see the work of the tractors in order to prepare uh, a, new, uh, uh, a new, new fields for, uh, for uh, people, for farmers. Uh, the, rural, uh, the rural development, uh, especially in the desert area, uh, is a state matter. It's not uh, something that a small farmer uh, can uh, can take uh, on his uh, responsibility. It is a uh, it is a matter of uh, of it is the state uh, business, and when it goes uh, uh, with the national uh, priority, uh, the budget uh, will be uh, will be found. Uh, we are lucky in Israel. Uh, to have uh, a very big NGO, Karen uh, Kayemet, Jewish National Fund, that uh, participate uh, generously in, the, in the raising the budget for the development. So in case that we don't have governmental uh, budget for, uh, for, the, for land development, uh, we, we have it. We can say mainly it comes from the Jewish National, uh, National Fund. Uh, the cost of uh, basic uh, land preparation, it means uh, leveling, uh, removing uh, of uh, um, 
part of the, the stones, uh, it is about uh, $30,000 per hectare. Uh, a farmer who, who uh, will get his land uh, from the village, from the, from the government, he get it. Uh, it's, not, it's not a private uh, land, he get it uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, 40, 49 years and then it can be renewed, the, the agreement with the government. Uh, the farmer is getting a plateau and uh, after he got the, 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 the land, is a uh, piece of uh, field, uh, now began, uh, began the responsibility of uh, the farmer to make the preparation for, uh, for growing. Uh, it means uh, building uh, net houses, greenhouses, installing uh, uh, irrigation uh, system, etc. This is all on the uh, responsibility uh, of, uh, uh, of the farmer. Uh, we can see here uh, the, the, the problem with the stones uh, that uh, uh, we have in the, uh, in the time of the construction of a net house. And I remind you that uh, this situation, it is uh, after uh, uh, the basic preparation that what was done by the tractors, by the big tractors. Uh, including uh, leveling and removing the, uh, the stone. Uh, so now the farmer uh, has to, uh, to handle with uh, the rest of the work. Uh, and uh, uh, we can see, you can see here that uh, the farmer uh, made some tranches and uh, the tranches uh, he can uh, fill with sand uh, there are several ways to prepare a uh, field. Um, the previous uh, way uh, was uh, uh, leveling and then covering all the area with uh, a layer of 30 centimeters of sand. Uh, and uh, then it's not a problem to, uh, to cultivate and to, uh, to go deeper with a tool deeper, to go to 30 centimeters with tools. But uh, since we have uh, that problem, uh, it is better to prepare permanent uh, rows and to minimize uh, the work, uh, the, the soil work uh, uh, later. So uh, the farmer in this example is preparing a permanent, uh, permanent rows. Uh, that we can we can call it no tilling later on. So uh, farmer filled the, the tranches with sand and uh, then a compost. Uh, the 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 soil the it's uh, it's very poor. There is, there is no organic matter. Fertility is uh, nothing. So it is uh, very important, essential to add a very nice amount of uh, compost in the uh, beginning of uh, in the beginning of uh, 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 the cultivation. Uh, after uh, putting the compost, we can see the work of the rotavator to mix it a little bit with the with the sand. And here, here we are, ten days after transplanting. Uh, 45 days after transplanting and uh, three months after uh, we have the fruit. And I remind you, all this is from the, from the area with the, with the huge amount of stones that we, I showed you uh, a minute ago. Uh, <clears throat> we can see another way of preparation, uh, the, the field. Uh, after the leveling, we, we don't see uh, the leveling. What we see here is the trucks that uh, uh, bring uh, sand uh, to the field. Uh, later on, a uh, tractor will make, will make the, uh, uh, the sand on a layer uh, of about 30, 30, 40 centimeters. Uh, of uh, sand and uh, 
uh, later on the farmer uh, will uh, make it uh, his, uh, his field. Uh, actually, this, uh, this method of uh, adding, uh, adding a, a layer all over the field, this is the, the, the ancient uh, 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 method of preparing the field. And uh, uh, we used to do it for uh, many years. Uh, till one day we, uh, we wake up when we found that uh, the sand resources are depleted. So it's, uh, it's uh, crazy how, how we can say that uh, we are in the desert. How, how can we say that uh, there, is, there is no, no sand? But again, on the east, we have the, the border with Jordan. On the west, we have, uh, we have nature reserve. We have some restricted area for the, for the army. We have mountains. So uh, really, the, the sources, it's not a Sahara. The Arava Desert is not Sahara. And the sources of uh, sand one day uh, become uh, uh, empty. Uh, so what I showed you before, uh, this is the one of the way to prepare uh, to prepare a, a, a field uh, with uh, to put to put the, uh, the the sand only in tranches. Uh, not all, uh, not over, uh, not all over uh, all the field. And the uh, other way to prepare uh, field uh, can be uh, instead of uh, instead of using uh, sand, uh, we can uh, do it also with other substrate like uh, uh, like uh, 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 compost. Um, uh, a lot of uh, effort uh, has been invested by the uh, local uh, R&D, uh, Arava R&D, together with the extension service uh, to develop the methods of uh, compost uh, comp cultivation in compost uh, uh, trenches. Uh, we can see here a field uh, nettles uh, with another another uh, uh, substrate. This is the local this is the local uh, uh, soil. Uh, and uh, practically, uh, the the cultivation is done in another medium. Here, it is a volcanic, uh, a volcanic uh, uh, gravel. Uh, we can see a tranche <coughs> in the local uh, soil, and uh, all the cultivation is done. All the all the root system is found in the middle in the uh, in the uh, compost. Um, many of uh, the alternatives, alternative uh, method uh, for uh, soil preparation uh, were developed uh, by the uh, local uh, uh, R&D. Uh, we can see uh, a photo of uh, Moshav uh, Chatseva uh, in the middle of the desert. Uh, we can see down the valley, down the valley, we can see uh, plots that uh, are located on sandy soil. Down in the valley, in the, in the Rift uh, Valley, Rift River, there is sand. And uh, the, the fields are located on local, local sandy soil. Sand that was brought uh, during uh, uh, many years by flood. But uh, when we go out of uh, out of the the Vadi, out of the, the dry river, uh, most of those fields uh, were prepared uh, on uh, on a way. One of the two ways that I described before, either either a, a layer of uh, of uh, thirty centimeter all over the field, or tranches that were filled with uh, with compost or. Uh, small quantity of uh, sand. Uh, we can see here another problem. Uh, this is what we call Chavar. Chavar, these are the sediments of the Dead Sea. You can see that nothing, nothing can grow on the Chavar. It is a very saline uh, 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 land uh, with a lot of uh, clay. 
so the only way to uh, to prepare field on the Chavar it is by uh, adding uh, sandy soil uh, on the top of the local soil. Uh, okay, this is so far. This is uh, with uh, uh, land preparation. If you have uh, any questions. Uh, somebody would like to to ask. Okay, so we we continue. You can write your questions on the chat, and uh, we can uh, we continue. Uh, Professor Doug also uh, referred to the uh, to the climatic uh, conditions in the in the Arava. Uh, I want to uh, describe it. Uh, a little bit the relative advantage. The most uh, important relative advantage of the Arava is the strong solar radiation all over the year. So if uh, normally the, the, the main season it is in the summer, in the, in the desert area, it can be in, in the Israeli desert or any other desert, uh, the, the main season will be the winter. And the, the main relative advantage is the, the strong radiation. So every place that uh, make, the, make the opposite, we call it off-season agriculture. If summer it is the regular, the, in winter it is the off-season uh, agriculture. Uh, <coughs> these photos, those photos are from uh, Holland and the middle of uh, the winter. And uh, you can see that uh, the, the Dutch farmers, uh, they use uh, uh, artificial uh, lightning <coughs> uh, in order to be able to go without uh, using uh, artificial uh, lightning. They cannot grow in, uh, during the winter. Uh, and we in the desert, we get this uh, radiation free of charge. Uh, so again, uh, high radiation, high temperature, uh, problem with sandstorms. Uh, in the winter, we might have uh, nights with uh, with a low temperature. We might have rain. The rain in the desert. Sometimes we have one year, one full year without rain, uh, and sometimes we we might have. Uh, uh, 50, 60 millimeters in uh, in uh, in one day. Uh, we might have uh, we have uh, hail storms from time to time. Sometimes the temperature drop down in the winter even to to minus. Uh, and then we have uh, frost uh, and also the the insects as they like very much to attack the the crops. Uh, so uh, uh, the farmers in the Arava, after uh, the first uh, years of, uh, of uh, farming, in the, the, they thought in the beginning that the, the desert is a natural uh, uh, greenhouse. But after uh, they realized uh, all those uh, problems, they were obliged to uh, the transition to protected cultivation. Uh, when we speak about uh, protected cultivation, we speak about greenhouses, net houses, tunnels. Uh, and this is uh, that uh, gave the possibility uh, for a higher yield and to uh, also for improved uh, quality. Uh, later on in the history of the Darva, the farmers started uh, to send uh, uh, fruit and vegetables, flowers, to export, so uh, growing under protected cultivation, it uh, makes possible uh, to stand on the international export uh, uh, standards. We can see here a photo uh, taken in Nyav, Moshav in Yav. Uh, I think uh, I think Professor Doug also used that, that photo uh, from uh, 1959. From the same angle, the photo was taken. So you can see that the desert, open field, uh, low tunnel, and we're 
2020, we can see uh, higher uh, greenhouses. Uh, most of the area of uh, uh, the Arava is, uh, is uh, covered with, uh, with plastic. It can be either with, uh, with tunnels, uh, net houses, or uh, uh, greenhouses. Uh, when we speak about uh, when we speak about uh, melon, melon, watermelon, eggplants, uh, those crops uh, like very much the hot climate, so it is uh, better uh, uh, to put them uh, in uh, in tunnels. And when we speak about uh, peppers, uh, the best way to grow pepper it is uh, in uh, uh, nettles. Um, a farmer that uh, uh, asked me about uh, the, the advantages of uh, growing peppers in uh, nettles, the first question is, uh, how much rain do you have? And if the amount of rain is, uh, is, uh, is, is very low, so it is, uh, can be a very good idea. But of course, in uh, places where you have a nice amount of rain, uh, nettles, this is not uh, the good idea, and it is better to go to grow under uh, um, um, greenhouses covered with uh, with uh, plastic. Uh, Dr. Gutman uh, gave you a very wide description uh, of the water uh, system in the Arava. Uh, I would like uh, to add uh, some uh, element. Uh, we can see uh, here. Uh, a preparation of a bowl in one of the, the villages. Uh, the problems with the with the water supply in the Arava is uh, we are limited in the supply, and the quantity is limited, and uh, uh, most of the water is is uh, saline. Uh, uh, Dr. Gutman was uh, so kind to share with us the, the cost of uh, how much it costs to, to prepare a, a, a bowl. So when we take an example of 500 meter deep bowl, it will cost uh, between five to six uh, million dollars. Uh, it means uh, it, uh, it is about between 10 to 12,000 dollars per meter. So to make uh, uh, one one meter uh, one meter, it's between ten to twelve thousand uh, dollars, and the expenses and the investment it, it is huge. Each well is different uh, with the uh, the the what we found uh, underground, and uh, Dr. Gutman uh, described those problems very wide. Uh, since we deal uh, mainly with, uh, with uh, saline water, I cannot imagine how, how it is to make agriculture without drip irrigation. Really, uh, this is an innovation that changed the world. Uh, if uh, before, uh, uh, before uh, 1963, uh, we didn't have uh, uh, those uh, this innovation uh, and the farmers used to uh, to irrigate with sprinklers, and even now they are uh, um, the, the part of uh, of the world that use uh, drip irrigation is very small in the world. But to in every place where we have uh, where we are, where you are short with water and where you have only brackish water, this is uh, this is the only way to grow. We irrigate straight to the point, straight to the root system, not, not uh, all over the, the land. We save water. And even if uh, the water is saline, we still can get very nice, uh, very nice uh, uh, production. Uh, <clears throat> we have some, uh, I want to share with you some, uh, some uh, numbers uh, concerning to the uh, water system in the in the in the Arava. Uh, there is an annual uh, quota of uh, seventy uh, thousand uh, cubic meter per family. The family 
Excuse me a minute. Uh, the unit of a family is a five hectare. So uh, uh, the farmer the family has a quota of uh, 70,000 cubic meter. Uh, this is not a problem. The annual quota is not a problem. The daily quota uh, might be a problem. Uh, the farmer, because there are, uh, there are times uh, along the year when the consumption of the plant either pepper or dates or any other crop will be very high and uh, the farmer has to, to manage with the with the uh, the limited quota uh, it can be between 190 to 240 cubic meter and there are a problem uh, if i go to the problem uh, you know, we are not connected to the national water supply. All the water comes from local wells. So the, the village, the, all, all, the, all the, the, the central Arava, it is, it is one unit, closed system. So if somebody is taking, is, if somebody is taking more, there will be, uh, the water will be missed to another family. Okay, so even if even a family a family want to pay more money, he cannot get more water. So that's it. Uh, in addition, uh, sometimes uh, there are uh, uh, to have sufficient uh, pressure uh, to be able to irrigate. Uh, the village uh, might uh, close uh, a part a sector in the field. Uh, so the other, which is open, will have sufficient uh, pressure for irrigation. Uh, so uh, it's another problem. Uh, the water quality is not uh, is not stable. Uh, sometimes you get uh, you get fresher water in the morning. Later on, uh, you get uh, water which is more uh, saline. Uh, it's not. It's not stable. Uh, to overcome uh, those problems, the fa many families uh, build uh, uh, small uh, water reservoir very close to the to the net house, to the greenhouse. Uh, that reservoir is about uh, uh, 200, 300 cubic meter, and it gives uh, more freedom, more flexibility uh, in uh, irrigation. Uh, recently, uh, farmers also uh, build uh, the salination units in uh, their field, uh, so they can uh, they, they detect uh, the local water. Uh, they desalinate. They, they sold the they use the the, the brine to irrigate uh, dates, and uh, the fresh water they mix it a little bit with the uh, with the brain to get uh, uh, to get back uh, part of the calcium, part of the magnesium, uh, so they can have a better better yield when uh, they use uh, uh, the salinated uh, water. So uh, uh, farmer must be very efficient. Farming the Arva must be very efficient when when you use uh, uh, water. Uh, this is a cross uh, section of the Arava Valley, uh, Dead Sea, Dead Sea in the north, Dead Sea in the north, uh, Red Sea in the south. Uh, Dead Sea it is minus, minus 400, and in the top of the valley, uh, it is about uh, one, uh, 150 50 meters high. So uh, there is a, there is a, a the, the center of the valley, it's about uh, 500 meter higher uh, than the Dead Sea. Uh, so the proximity, uh, the proximity or the distance from the sea from both sides and uh, the, the height of the place uh, above sea level, uh, that make uh, these two factors make the difference 
of about uh, uh, seven degrees permanent at night temperature between the, the middle, between the middle of the valley and the edges of uh, the valley. So we have uh, uh, what we call climatic, uh, climatic niche and uh, the farmers that uh, know these, uh, those conditions since uh, they, they get started to cultivate, uh, they make the choice of uh, the crops according to the relative, uh, to, the, uh, to the local condition, to the relative advantage. If pepper uh, prefer a fresh, uh, uh, relatively low uh, temperature, so we will find in the center of the valley, in uh, Paran, so far, two villages, we, we will find more peppers, and we don't find, in those villages, we don't find any melon or watermelon, and when we go to the villages which are uh, closer uh, to the to uh, more in the north, uh, we will find more melon, watermelon, eggplants, those crops that uh, uh, like uh, that are thermophile. Uh, some examples of uh, uh, of uh, 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 Crops. We can see production of uh, uh, production of uh, uh, cherry tomatoes. Uh, so before I, before you go before we go, I would like to uh, I, I would like to add uh, two more uh, remarks concerning the water. Uh, <coughs> We can take the we can take the the month the quarter the daily quarter, and uh, make some uh, calculation. Uh, let's say uh, let's make the calculation for dates. Uh, a tree, one one palm day tree, in the highest in the highest uh, consumption, it must have one thousand one thousand liter. Uh, one tree per day. <clears throat> so uh, let's take uh, the, uh, this uh, quantity. So a farmer uh, that has, uh, let's say, in his unit, he has 250 trees. There is no way that uh, if he has only 190 cubic meter per day, uh, the, the trees will grow, but it will be, it will not be the 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 optimum way. It will not be the the optimum uh, uh, yield and, and quality. Uh, so farmer uh, cannot make uh, cannot irrigate uh, more than uh, two and a half uh, hectares of uh, of uh, dates due to this uh, uh, quota. His unit is five hectare, but if you want to grow dates, you cannot irrigate properly more than two and a half uh, hectares. Uh, I want to give you another example for, uh, uh, for pepper. Uh, when uh, we grow pepper, uh, we need in to, to, uh, to ensure sufficient uh, leaching uh, of, uh, of the salt. <coughs> uh, we must uh, irrigate about 60 cubic meter per hectare. Uh, this is an amount of water in the highest uh, consumption. Uh, this uh, amount uh, will ensure uh, a sufficient uh, leaching. Uh, so when a farmer has a limited uh, daily quota of about uh, 200 uh, cubic meter, uh, and let's say he, he cultivates all, all the five hectares, so 200 quarter of 200 cubic meter divided by five hectare, it can irrigate, it can allow only 40 cubic meter uh, per hectare, but we need 60. So uh, what, what will happen is that uh, the pepper uh, will start uh, suffering from uh, salt or salt accumulation. Uh, this is a, uh, this, these are a daily, Daily problem, and the farmers have to uh, to deal with it, to deal with it. 
either to, uh, to make a smaller field or to make uh, miracles. And since there, there are no miracles, so <laughs> it is a problem. Uh, we hope that uh, one day we will uh, be connected to the national water supply and then uh, we will have in the desert, we will have the water for the Mediterranean, either for the Mediterranean or for the, the, the Red Sea. Uh, these will be the source of uh, the salinated uh, uh, water. Okay, this is what I wanted to add for the water. Uh, so I start. I, I started uh, about. I, I spoke about the climatic niche along the Arva Valley. Uh, so we have uh, uh, cherry tomatoes. Here we can see very nice clusters. Very nice clusters of uh, of uh, uh, cherry tomatoes. <coughs> uh, we can see uh, greenhouse <coughs> greenhouse uh, tomatoes. Uh, that can reach the, the yield of uh, about uh, 200 uh, ton per, uh, uh, per hectare. Uh, peppers, uh, this is the, the, the biggest uh, crop in the, uh, in the Arava. Uh, good farmers can reach a yield of uh, 100 ton per hectare, even, even higher. Uh, in the villages that are in the relatively lower temperature, the yield can, uh, can uh, reach even 140, 140 ton per hectare. And in the villages uh, which are uh, more to the north, uh, we cannot reach that uh, yield because the night temperature is higher and it can be, it will be uh, a limiting factor for a nice, for good uh, uh, food, uh, food setting, food production. Uh, we can see here another, uh, another production, another example of, uh, of uh, special pepper varieties, with a very nice uh, yield. Uh, eggplants, about 100 and it can reach the yield of 140 ton per hectare. Uh, the two crops, the, the peppers and, uh, and the eggplants are crops per export. In the past, we used to send also cherry tomatoes, tomatoes, melon per export. But uh, since there is a very big uh, competition from uh, Morocco, from Turkey, uh, Egypt. So uh, it is no more uh, the rentability of, uh, of uh, export, it's going down. Uh, so what remains now in the basket of uh, export, uh, it is only uh, pepper and uh, eggplant. I will speak about rentability in, in a few minutes. Uh, watermelon. Uh, mini watermelon, big watermelon. Uh, Evelyn uh, told you a very nice uh, story. This is not a story, this is a reality. Uh, we try uh, every year, we try to find better uh, varieties uh, with high sugar, high production, a better taste uh, to offer to the, to the farmers. And to grow watermelon, to grow melon, and to reach very high yield, it is, a, it is really an art. Uh, I would say that to grow tomato, it is uh, relatively uh, simple. The tomato has tolerance uh, for the grower. You can do better, or you can do worse, you, you will get yield. But for a melon and watermelon, if you make a mistake, uh, it can be the, the, the cost for this mistake can be very high. Uh, the, the ability of the farmer to spoil uh, the production for himself, it is, uh, it is big. Uh, about uh, seven, 10% of the farmers are, uh, 
are uh, bio-organic. Uh, the, the relative advantage of, uh, of the desert, uh, the isolation of the, of the plots, uh, give uh, a good uh, chance to uh, farmers to go in the bio uh, system. But as you can see, it is not the majority since the expenses uh, of a bio-organic uh, farm it is higher than a regular uh, farmer. Uh, in the past, there were about uh, 300 uh, hectares of uh, cut flower, uh, uh, mainly, mainly to export. Uh, now uh, it is uh, about 100 hectares of uh, cut flower. What happened to the rest? Uh, other countries like Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia uh, have uh, a good climate for, for uh, flowers. The, the labor is uh, cheaper. So uh, uh, the farmers uh, left the, the flower production the flower producer, the, the left of the, the plots in, in Israel, as I prefer to grow by themselves or uh, with other uh, companies, as I prefer to grow in uh, other uh, country. The, the international market, they don't care if the flower arrives from Uganda, Ethiopia, Kenya, or Israel, uh, or the tomato, the cherry tomato. What, what they need, they, they want to have the flower, they want to have their cherry tomato, and if it comes from another country, as long as the quality is good, it's okay. We are in the global market. Uh, this is an example, another example of uh, early grapes in the in the Arava. Uh, the, the Arava uh, used used to be. Now it is less and less. The Arava used to be um, export-oriented production. Since the rentability of uh, export is going down, uh, less and less uh, farmers uh, aim their production for uh, for uh, export. You can see here the the export value in uh, in 2016 reached the uh, uh, 280 million US dollar. I believe it now. I don't have the updated uh, numbers, but I'm sure that this number, to date number, it's, it is a uh, much lower. <clears throat> I want to uh, to speak about uh, uh, some plant protection uh, aspects in the growing in the uh, in the desert. Uh, I, re I repeat again, we have a very hot and dry a dry summer. Uh, the temperature sometimes reach the maximum of 48 degrees. Relative humidity can be very low, even 20%. The, the radiation is very high, 900, even 1000 watt. Uh, so uh, uh, a farmer uh, can uh, use can use the uh, the climatic uh, condition for a process what we call uh, solarization. What is solarization? In the middle of uh, uh, the summer, beginning of the summer, after finishing after finishing with uh, with the, the crop, uh, the farmer will prepare very quick. Will prepare the field, uh, cover it with uh, mulching. We'll use mulching of uh, transparent uh, polyethylene. Uh, the sun radiation, uh, the very strong uh, uh, radiation will pass through the plastic and will boil, will boil uh, the, the soil which is uh, under. The temperature under the plastic mulching uh, will, uh, will go uh, higher in, during the day, even to 65. 70 degrees at night it will go to 40 degrees 40 70 40 70 one month after one month uh, when the farmer will open holes in the mulching for uh, for transplanting or uh, he will remove uh, totally uh, 
uh, the, uh, the mulching, the soil will be clean. Uh, clean, uh, clean of uh, uh, seeds, of um, uh, bad, uh, bad uh, wild uh, weeds, uh, clean of uh, any pathogen, viruses, etc. Uh, so this is an example of uh, taking advantage of the uh, climatic conditions. Uh, many farmers, uh, they uh, uh, they use the time when the soil is uh, covered with plastic and they can add uh, some uh, uh, pesticides. So they have a combined work of uh, solarization and uh, also fungicide or insecticide uh, to kill the, the pathogen in the, in the soil. Uh, for farmers who are uh, bio-organic farm farmers, this is the only way that they can uh, prepare the, the field uh, to the next, uh, uh, next uh, uh, season. Uh, another, uh, uh, another subject that I want uh, to raise is the subject of phytosanitary break. Uh, in the during the, the early 80s, 1980s, uh, Arava field uh, suffered uh, from a severe viral uh, uh, epidemic. Uh, there were many fields, uh, many fields were, uh, were damaged uh, by viruses. Uh, studies in the uh, agricultural uh, research organization uh, have identified uh, the insects that uh, uh, served as uh, vectors uh, for uh, transmission, transmitting uh, of uh, the viruses. It was mainly a white fly and uh, uh, aphids. In that time, it was uh, proposed uh, to take advantage of the hot and dry uh, uh, summer to cut cut the cycle, to cut the cycle, uh, to cut the, the chain of, uh, trans of uh, transmission of uh, uh, the viruses from, from uh, one, uh, one season to the other by, uh, uh, by, cut, by, by uh, assessing the cessation of the agricultural uh, cultivation. It means we finish the season on, uh, in the middle of uh, June and uh, we take one month with no, no uh, cultivation in the field. Uh, we take, we, we use the, during this, that month, so we use the time, uh, we take the time for the solarization. Now, during that uh, month, uh, there will be no host, no host uh, found, no uh, uh, cultivated uh, plants uh, uh, can serve as host for, uh, for insects. And by that way, uh, we can cut the, the, the cycle of a uh, continuous cycle of viruses from one season to, uh, to the other. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the phytosanitary uh, break was uh, defined as a law. I think this is the only country and uh, this is the only region in Israel I don't know any other country that uh, put it by law that you are not uh, you are not allowed to go in a part of a part of the year. Uh, so our parliament, uh, uh, the Knesset, uh, accepted uh, 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 put it in in our book of uh, laws. Uh, it was. Uh, uh, the details were determined in an order uh, issued by the Minister of Agriculture in uh, 1994. It means the, the Parliament gave the authorized the Minister of, uh, of Agriculture every year to publish an order that uh, detail, uh, include a detailed list of uh, plants that are uh, allowed to grow or not allowed to grow in, from, one, from date to date. It is published uh, every, 
uh, every year. And uh, uh, farmers, they, they take this, uh, this uh, uh, point very seriously uh, and uh, it is for the benefit of uh, our area. Uh, you cannot do it in a place which is not a desert. Since uh, the, the natural uh, fauna around the, around the field uh, can supply unlimited, uh, uh, unlimited uh, population, unlimited uh, uh, host for the, for the insects, so they can multiply and continue their, uh, their, their, uh, uh, their life. But if around it is a desert and in the field you cut, you cut the, uh, the uh, you destroy the host, so uh, the big part of the population will be, will be of the insect will be uh, eradicated. Uh, oh, I spoke about uh, I spoke about uh, uh, solarization. I mentioned I described the phytosanitary break. Uh, I want to tell you that uh, the IPM. Uh, our, our time in this lecture is, is, is not long enough to go in details in uh, many topics, but the integrated pest management in, in the desert, under desert condition, is successful because of the reason that I described to you, we are, we are surrounded by, by a desert. So if we, if, we, uh, if we treat the field in the proper way, uh, we can uh, we can succeed in a, uh, in the integrated pest managers very much. Uh, the Arava region took a, another step, and uh, there is a regional control of uh, Mediterranean fruit fly, Ceratitis capitata. There are many countries, uh, United States, Japan, that. Uh, uh, it is a go no go a, a place a region that uh, is is known as a, a where there is a population of Mediterranean fruit fly will not get permission to make export to United States or to Japan there are more countries in this list and in Israel the Arava region this is the only region when they that they got the permission to make export to the United States after the American land protection authorities. They were uh, convinced that uh, uh, the regional control of uh, this uh, quarantine uh, pest is, uh, is really uh, is, is done in a good way uh, in uh, that region. Uh, all those uh, uh, topics are under a, a project, a regional project that we call the Clean of our, uh, project. This is a flagship uh, uh, project of, uh, of uh, the region that take conclude all the topics of uh, plant, uh, plant protection uh, together. Uh, some aspect of uh, uh, economic. Uh, there is a steady increase of uh, production cost, not only not only in the in Arab agriculture, all over the world. The <coughs> the uh, expenses, <coughs> sorry, the production cost uh, uh, are increasing, and the income is uh, getting down. So the rentability of uh, doing agriculture uh, is not as it was before. Uh, so I, I gave you, uh, I showed you photos of uh, flowers, cherry tomatoes. So uh, these are uh, two examples that uh, uh, crops that are uh, a labor uh, intensive crop, uh, a lot of uh, labor. Uh, should be invested in uh, cherry tomatoes or in uh, cut flower. So during the, the years, many flowers, many many growers, many farmers, they left uh, those crops and they, they switched to pepper. Because in pepper, you need 
less uh, less worker uh, less workers to uh, to do the the job and uh, there were uh, with our ears that uh, uh, the pepper uh, had a very nice uh, profitability and the production become uh, bigger and bigger and uh, if uh, if in the past uh, we had one one export company a Crexco uh, after uh, uh, the farmers uh, applied to the Supreme Court in Israel the Supreme Court uh, gave an uh, uh, order the Minister of Agriculture to give their permission to make to open more uh, uh, more export companies so in 2007 the the exporters of agricultural uh, product uh, raised up to 30 companies uh, the product the, the rentability was was good so we can see switch from a uh, production of uh, fish ornamental fish produ production of of a uh, of a uh, flower cut flower and cherry tomato they switch to pepper um, in uh, 2008, there was a big economic crisis in, uh, in Europe and uh, the euro uh, weakened compared to the shekel, the euro, the dollar come weakened compared to the shekel. Uh, our expenses, the expenses of the, of the local farmers, Aravao, uh, anywhere in Israel, it is in, in local currency, in shekel. The income, it is in dollar. And uh, since the, 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 the shekel is very strong, so the income that they get from export is become lower, lower all the time. Uh, so the, it's also a reason for a decline in the, in the profitability for exporting. Uh, in uh, 2009, in, in, in 2014, um, because there were too many pepper uh, producer, uh, we think, uh, and uh, uh, together with the problem I described to you with the with the foreign uh, uh, currency, uh, there was a crisis, another crisis with the trade con uh, condition with the uh, Western Europe with Russia, and uh, since uh, in that time there. Were there was a very big amount, a very big uh, quantity of pepper for export. The crisis hit uh, the pepper grows very, very much. Uh, the government uh, uh, published uh, a special support program for uh, pepper growers and they offer 70%, 70% of, uh, uh, of uh, investment. If a farmer is doing an investment uh, in any other crop except pepper, the government gave gave him gave them back 70% of his investment in order to help farmers to switch from pepper uh, to other uh, uh, to other uh, uh, crops. Uh, uh, we can see the, the very big ways of uh, of uh, uh, the area. Here we can see the season, we can see the area of uh, pepper. Uh, so in, in, 2000, uh, in 2012, it was the area of pepper, it was uh, almost 2,000 hectares in the Arava region. Most of the Arava was covered with, uh, with pepper. And uh, due to the, to the economic crisis and uh, uh, later on, when the government published uh, published uh, the the uh, the special support for, uh, for for farmers to leave to leave the pepper, uh, we can see that the the, uh, the area of pepper started to go uh, to go down, and the farmers uh, went back to a basket of crops like it was before for years. Um, I used to grow uh, a little bit of everything, onion, tomatoes, melon, pepper, and they made their living. But uh, later on, they found the profitability of pepper become 
They go, so it become monoculture. Now we have the way back. <coughs> the farmer find <coughs> uh, looking for the way <coughs> uh, to uh, to grow uh, other crops, uh, except uh, uh, except peppers. Uh, we can uh, see uh, uh, this chart. We can see by by ear. We can see the the pepper production. Uh, so we can see the export in the top. It uh, it arrived to uh, about one one hundred and sixty thousand ton per uh, export, and uh, the the blue light is the local. This is the local uh, market. So the local market, we eat more or less. We eat more or less the same the same uh, amount of pepper. The, with the rise of uh, population, uh, it increases every 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 year. It increases a little bit. But the export, we can see it went up and now it become uh, like a 50-50% uh, with, the, with the local uh, market. Uh, so the farmers, uh, a farmer but what want to stay, to stay a farmer uh, and he started look for other uh, crops. Uh, the main alternative it is dates, and many farmers uh, are planting now dates, uh, dates palm. So we can see this is the the graph of the of the pepper. It goes down, and this is the the graph of the dates that is going higher every every year. Now, if the farmers uh, will uh, continue to make uh, uh, to uh, to send the the dates with um, many export companies, maybe within uh, several years uh, we will have the same price with dates, like what we had with uh, with, with uh, peppers. I don't know. It's a big problem. Uh, the marketing. Uh, when you have the marketing in one hand, you can control better. You can you can fight better against. Uh, uh, the market uh, problem, and when uh, uh, every three, four, five farmers, when they create uh, another expo company, uh, it, is, it is a problem. Uh, okay, I, I would like to uh, to summarize uh, our work today. Uh, farmers switching between crops, reducing uh, cultivation of uh, of uh, intensive uh, of uh, inten of labor intensive uh, product, and uh, pass to uh, fruit trees uh, like dates. Uh, there is a big plantation of uh, of uh, mango trees. Uh, farmers uh, are reducing the production or export and uh, do more for the local market but hey we are we are a small country and uh, the local market is very quick can be saturated so uh, it's not a, it's not a miracle uh, and uh, many farmers are uh, looking in the Arava region are looking for an alternative source of income instead of uh, agriculture. Arva is a very nice place. I hope for you, uh, when better uh, times arrive, I hope for you to have uh, the opportunity to come and to visit Arava. It is a very nice uh, uh, place. So uh, uh, farmers switch, families switch to tourism. It can be local tourism. It can be uh, uh, foreign tourism. Uh, there are uh, uh, families that switch to high tech industry, other to uh, services. Um, farmers that become a little older and to say, okay, I, I have enough. I, have, I want to, to, to go to my pension. Now a farmer is not uh, an employee, he's an independent. So for um, many of them, they have no pension. So they gave uh, the field uh, by leasing to another uh, farmer. Uh, there are a few that sell the, the farms and left the area. 
but many they give the fields for their neighbors and uh, they make their living for what they get from the money that they get uh, from uh, uh, from the, the leasing. Um, there are uh, there is a process of uh, decreasing the number of uh, small farmers and uh, there is a formation of large farms. Uh, now this process is not a, is not a unique only to to the Arava or to Israel. We can find it in in uh, in many places. Uh, now I I describe to you with uh, the reality. Uh, but on the other end, there is a there is a waiting list. There are still uh, young uh, couple, young families that want to become uh, uh, members in the moshavim in the in the Arava. They want to become uh, uh, farmers. So uh, uh, since we in the villages in the the moshavim in the central Arava. Since the population is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so the balance, the balance is still uh, is still uh, uh, positive. And we can see here uh, I got the information from the Faculty of Agriculture and from the Israel uh, Central Bureau of Statistics. Uh, the blue line is the the number of private farmers in Israel. Uh, since uh, 1960 to 2020, and uh, the red line, it is the the size the size of the of the uh, single farm uh, as a percent. So we take 1960 as 100%. So we can see that the size of the farm is getting uh, for uh, 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 for. 450 times bigger than it was years ago. And the number of uh, private farmers, uh, it was, they were uh, 70 or about 80,000 uh, small farmers in 1960. And uh, today there are less than 10,000 small farmers uh, in Israel. Now uh, we see that, that situation in any any countries. We can see it uh, also in the in Israel and in the uh, Arava. Uh, there is a, a very nice uh, support system. Uh, the state uh, guaranteed the bank credit uh, for farmer for uh, and for uh, a financial uh, uh, mentor, uh, mentors. Uh, there is a state participation in investment uh, for the farmers, for those of uh, them who want to stay stay in the region, stay in in, the, in in agricultural production, and if it is not pepper, it can be dates or any other crop. So uh, the state participate in the investment. Uh, the ministry is. Uh, 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 support the extension service. This is a governmental uh, system, and uh, uh, the budget for the regional uh, R and D uh, is increased, especially for the uh, to develop uh, alternative uh, alternative crops, not to, not to stay only uh, with uh, uh, with uh, vegetables or old dates. Uh, I want to I want to summarize with a few examples uh, of uh, uh, what uh, we have as innovation in uh, in uh, our uh, uh, local uh, Arava R&D. Uh, first is a Camophera gilen gilidensis gilidensis Camophera gilidensis. Uh, this plant, it is a, it is a, it is a like a laboratory. This is a plant laboratory. Uh, the plant uh, has been known uh, since ancient time as a source of uh, as a source for uh, perfume. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> it is uh, it is rich. Uh, it is rich with uh, and, and production of many organic. Uh, 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 chemical. 
Uh, today, uh, the raw material for uh, extracting uh, an extract is collected in the wild. And if we can grow uh, plants uh, like the uh, Corbifora, and we can control the, the conditions, uh, we can arrive to a, uh, to a kind of agricultural product which we can offer to, uh, to farmer uh, to grow. <coughs> now, the, that plant, the, the, the sap of the plant, um, of this specific uh, plant can be uh, can be a, ba a basis for uh, developing of uh, drugs uh, to treat uh, diseases uh, like uh, cancer, psoriasis. Uh, so we are working uh, very hard in order to develop a, a protocol, a practice for the farmers uh, to grow such a plant. To grow, it's not a problem, but it's, but it, we want to, in our R&D, we want to develop the old chain to make the, the linkage uh, with the, with the uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, companies that will take the, the basic uh, uh, product and uh, will continue to gather with us the, 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 uh, the, value, uh, the value chain and for the profitability of, uh, of uh, all of us. Uh, another example is the bitter melon, uh, Mavortica. Uh, now that plant is, uh, is used uh, in traditional Indian medicine to treat uh, diabetes uh, uh, people. So uh, uh, we are working to, uh, uh, to make a choice of, uh, of better uh, uh, varieties with higher uh, uh, a uh, higher amount of uh, active ingredient. Uh, another example, it is the Moringa. Uh, the Moringa is uh, known as, uh, uh, as uh, uh, a superfood. Uh, so uh, what we do is uh, we're working also to, to find, to develop a protocol uh, that will give, <coughs> it will, uh, Enable us uh, to do it in a very wide scale. The, the production of uh, of Moringa. We worked to see what we can uh, do uh, from, from the root system, the leaves, the seeds, uh, etc. Uh, another example. It is the uh, the cannabis for uh, medical uh, purposes. I know that there are many countries that the cannabis is forbidden uh, for uh, production. Uh, in Israel, there is a regulation uh, for uh, cannabis uh, for medical purposes. And what we see here, it is, the, uh, this is a test of uh, varieties of hemp. Hemp, it is a, a, a species of uh, of cannabis, but without any uh, uh, any uh, active ingredient, and uh, the the oil of the of them, it is very rich with uh, uh, with uh, omega three, omega six uh, 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 extra. So this is also a project which we try uh, to go with. Uh, <coughs> Professor, uh, Professor Doug mentioned the collaboration between the extension service, the R&D, and the farmer. Uh, I think that uh, the private uh, company, the private uh, sector, is, uh, is a very important uh, part uh, in uh, the success of the farming in the Arava. Since uh, we, we are not, we are not a concurrence. We, we have the same. Uh, the same client, and, and for the interests of uh, all of us, it is that agriculture, that the region will, will succeed. So we collaborate with uh, private uh, companies. In many, many of our research, it is uh, uh, together. Uh, uh, well, the fruit of uh, the fruit of uh, the uh, the development is not only agriculture. 
it is a uh, we can say it is with nice uh, with a nice uh, uh, villages with a very good uh, education and culture and uh, tourism and, uh, <clears throat> and this is uh, i think this is the end of my lecture and if you have questions please bravo bravo thank you yoram thank you bravo from all of us <laughs> thank you um, okay, let's uh, go to questions. Yeah, there, there are some questions. Um, those who want to ask them directly, please, please, um, if you can um, show us with your hand, to raise your hand and we will give you the possibility to, to speak and hopefully it will work okay, fine. But before, before there are some people waiting with questions for a long time. Um, Yoram, uh, there are some questions about compost. Uh, yes. Where, where, uh, from where is the compost coming? Um, if, um, if you are looking for a good relation between soil and compost, in order to improve the sandy soil. Uh, some, can, can you tell us a bit more about compost <coughs> use? Uh, the, the, the compost is a very big subject. It is a lecture of two hours, but uh, let's say with a, with a small spoon, uh, I can say that uh, uh, we recommend uh, to the farmer to, uh, to make a soil test and uh, if uh, the amount of organic matter in the soil is low, is lower than two uh, percent, it is uh, recommended to add uh, compost. Uh, sometimes the, the soil is so rich that it is no uh, no need to add uh, to add compost. Okay, now let's say that the soil is poor. Uh, compost, it is a it is a, a product that uh, comes. Uh, after uh, processing of uh, uh, at least three months, mixing several kinds of uh, of uh, waste it can be manure, can be <coughs> uh, some uh, municipal uh, garbage, mixing together, and the uh, bacteria, the microorganisms, they make the work, and the result is a uh, compost. So. Uh, uh, we, we recommend to, to use uh, compost, uh, but if the compost it is if the compost is good, it uh, it can improve uh, the structure. It can the structure of the soil. It can improve the the water retention, the cation retention. If the compost is not good, uh, if, uh, what does it mean? Not good. If the compost is not uh, is not done. So we might uh, bring with the compost. We might bring seeds of uh, of bad uh, weeds from another place where the cow, the chicken, where they eat their food, and uh, they, they contribute the the seeds to the manure. Um, in Israel, there are producers of uh, compost. And normally, the farmer is not the one who is preparing the compost for himself. There are at least uh, four or five big producers of, uh, of compost. What the farmer has to do just to raise, uh, make a phone call and to order uh, one truck, two trucks, or whatever he needs. Now there is a difference between the quality of the compost. There is a municipal compost, there organic compost. Uh, there's so much information about compost. I don't know uh, what Mm -hmm. What else uh, should I add? Okay, this it, it will be the next lecture. Okay, be my guest. <laughs> um, we had some people asking about net houses. Um, let me see if I. Uh, 
There was a, an interesting um, question about net houses. Um, how, how do, well, it's not raining in the Arava Valley, but um, let's say, what do you recommend, uh, Yoram, uh, at, at which, or till which level of rain may uh, net houses be used? Okay, uh, this is a typical uh, net house. Uh, we can say that uh, our condition, the, there are two layers of net. There is a permanent insect proof net. The insect proof net can be 25 mesh, can be 50 mesh. And the second layer is a shading net, 30%, 40%. The combination of two nets, one fixed and another uh, movable, uh, give a good, uh, a good uh, uh, way to the farmer to control uh, the production, many of, of pepper. Now, if, if, the, if we put a net house in an area where we have uh, plenty of rain, it will be like, uh, uh, how do you say in English, a piège, I forgot, trap. Okay, it will be a trap for uh, moisture. Uh, you put, when you put a, 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 a net house, let's say in Gabon or in, uh, in Nigeria, where you have a lot of rain, the water will enter and will not go outside. So let's say more than, if we expect more than 200 millimeters of rain, I think it can be a risk because you might have more problems with diseases than a uh, 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 good uh, uh, production. Thank you, Yoram. And another question related to net houses. I, I think I, I answered to Tenena, uh, asked us, how, when you spoke about solarization. Yes. When you are doing solarization, you are taking off the net houses, aren't you? Or uh, okay, just a minute again. Okay, this is a this is a net house. Uh, you can see that uh, the the net, the two layers are on the on the net house, and, and the mulching is uh, is down. If it is possible to open the net the solarization will be more efficient. Sometimes if you open the net, uh, especially when we speak about insect proof net, if it is a, a shading net, it's not a problem. It is very flexible. But if it is a, a insect proof net, the, the, the flexibility of the insect proof net is not so good. So once you open it, once you open it, you will, be, uh, you will have a problem to put it, to put it in, in a good way. So that's why uh, insect-proof net, uh, net houses, we prefer not to touch, not to touch the net till it, uh, till it is spoiled. To open, close, open, close, this is, not, this is not a good idea. Shading net, yes, open, close, no, no limit. So construction, uh, that are, uh, that are uh, covered with insect proof, we make the compromise always, always we, we must, a farmer must, must do a compromise with the, with the good, uh, with, the, with the best idea to the reality. The, you, cannot, uh, you cannot do everything. So we make the, we take the compromise and they leave the, the net house covered with the insect proof net. Thank you, Joram. Uh, okay, let's, let's go to some uh, questions. Uh, Ziad, you wanted to ask, yes? Ziad, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Hi, thank you, uh, Joram, for the presentation. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, you know, uh, 
Uh, we were talking about the salinity of the water in Wadi Araba and uh, in sorry in yeah in, in Araba Valley, and one yes. of the most challenges is the salinity and the lack of the water, or the shortage of the water. I mean, yes. Uh, what is what is the salinity in in, in, in the valley? The, the range of the salinity. Um, does okay. the salinity yeah. affect affect the, the production of the plants? Uh, sorry, what was the last uh, question? Uh, the last uh, sentence? The salinity of the water yes. in the Arab Valley will affect yes. the plantation, right? What is the yes. salinity and what is the limit required for this plantation? Okay. Uh, Dr. Gutman gave a very, very, very wide description of this problem. Now, there are uh, the range of uh, uh, the range of salinity between uh, different uh, bo uh, boroughs can be between uh, four millimol per uh, millimol per, uh, per centimeter till uh, uh, till uh, two point five. Okay, two point five four. This is most of the wells. Uh, there are wells that were uh, there are uh, boroughs that were uh, digged. Uh, years ago in an area which is now Jordanian territory. Mm -hmm. when, uh, when, because the, the border, the, the, tem the temporary uh, uh, border line uh, before uh, 1994 was a few kilometers to the east. After the peace uh, treaty between Israel and, and uh, Jordan, uh, the the border line uh, was moved to the west. Yeah. So uh, in the, there are about thirty percent of the of the boroughs of the Arava remain in the in the Jordanian territory. In the peace treaty, there is an annex that uh, Jordan uh, was uh, so kind to let Israel continue to use the water. And Israeli, in Israel, support uh, Jordan with water from the Lake of Galilee. So there is a kind yeah, of yeah. Uh, water exchange, and everybody is uh, is uh, satisfied. Now, as 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 uh, as, uh, as far as you go to the east, the water quality is better because uh, it is the aquifer that get the water from the rain that falls on the mountains of uh, Jordan. So I know wells that are 1.4 millimol per centimeter, and it is very low salinity. Now you go three, four kilometers to the west, and the, the salinity can be uh, three times uh, higher. Now, in, in, to give you an example of uh, crops, uh, to grow strawberries, you cannot, you cannot do it in a good way if the salinity is higher than uh, 1.2. Let's say, let's make a compromise, 1.4. So uh, if you go to the, to the eastern side of the valley, close to the mountains of Jordan, you can grow strawberries. But if you go three, four kilometers to the west, there is no way that you can grow strawberries because the, the salinity will uh, make damage to the plant. Yeah. Uh, actually, just uh, if you allow me to give just a small, small, small brief about what we are doing. I am, I am a water treatment expert, uh, doing some projects with the agriculture um, ministry of agriculture. Also, I have my own farm. You know, that's why I'm talking from practical experience. Now, you talk about the uh, the RO plant, and some families are doing uh, some small RO plants. You know. And uh, I need to know that the cost per cubic meter production of uh, treated water, if you have any idea. Uh, I know that, uh, that uh, to buy a, a unit of the salination water. No, 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 I don't, I don't uh, excuse me, I don't, I don't want to go for uh, some details uh, because the capital cost for the RO plant or whatever, for uh, desalination plant, it's very okay. between, for, for example, 1,000 US dollar per cubic meter, right? But the cost of a production, you know, once you have the capital or the, the equipment, so the most important thing is the production or the, the running cost. 
Because you, why? You, this will bring us to something. Why you don't make uh, some families are making a central RO plant so they can share the water? Uh, the the water the water comes from uh, from uh, from supply. We we don't have a, a borehole for each family. Yeah. The water company, the the water company control the boreholes, and they have uh, their uh, uh, reservoirs, and the the water is being supplied to the villages, and the villages uh, are responsible for the for the for, this, for the for sharing the water for all the farmers. So uh, I, I, I'm not sure I understand your question. The, the, water, the water comes from a central place or from several uh, uh, centers, but not from, not from out of the area. The region, the Arava region is a closed, is a closed system. Mm. Uh, all the water supplied uh, comes from wells uh, that are in, in the region. Okay. The last question is, I, I got, I got, I got your idea, but my last question is, as what we do here in Jordan, we are going for uh, traditional products like uh, tomato, pepper, uh, etc. You know, uh, why you don't go for some uh, tropical products like pineapple, uh, something that. Uh, you can, uh, okay. I don't know, if, okay. if you grow in Wadi Arab, you need some hot and warm, warm weather, right? Okay, Pi uh, Pi uh, uh, pineapple, uh, it's, it's, it's a tropical uh, crop. Uh, there are two growers of uh, pineapple in the region, in the Arava region, and uh, uh, both of them, they have uh, a small plant for the salination, and uh, also they have to they use cooling system. So you need you must have cooling system and the salination and the salinated water. Now the investment for a, a pineapple is, is very high, so uh, that's why it's not it's not so uh, common to grow that kind of crop. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, Charafna. Uh, thank you. I, I want to remind everybody, in our YouTube page, you will find some very interesting conferences on water management, water issues, okay? We did a very nice uh, series of conferences, so maybe Ziad, you will find some, some answers to, to your questions. You can always write us, everybody. Uh, an email and we will try to to meet you with some experts or something like that okay uh, Apollinaire you have your hand yes Ray, so, please yes Ray. yes where, so, where are you how are you where are you from I am from I'm from the Republic of Benin ah bonjour yes this is my first time to attend the, the, this uh, training. I'm so happy. Welcome, welcome. And, and I have been informed. I have been informed about your program uh, from the Israel Consulate in Benin. Good. So my my, my question here is: uh, during his presentation, he said that uh, teratitis capitata is a problem. So I, I just want to know what is the incidence, incidence of the insect pest and in which crop? And now uh, what type of control method he's using to, uh, so that he control the pest? So how, how, how does he control the pest to reduce the yield losses? In my country, for instance, or in Africa and in many countries, Patrocera dorsalis is a fruit fly. Pro we have a, a program with fruit fly pro uh, fruit flies called Patrocera dorsalis. This is a quarantine insect causing disease, uh, causing uh, damage to fruit. 
So, but in his case, uh, this is uh, Ceratitis capitata. So, the incidence, the crop on which the insect pest is causing damage, and what kind of control method. Thank you very much. Uh, I will try to answer uh, your long question in a short answer. Uh, Sartitis capitata, Mediterranean, right. Mediterranean fruit fly, it is a quarantine pest. It means that in, uh, in many countries it is go, no go. If your, uh, if your uh, region, your state is uh, uh, contaminated, uh, is infested with uh, that uh, insect, you will not be able to export. Uh, <clears throat> now, what we do in, uh, in specifically in the Arava region and in general in Israel, uh, there are uh, uh, three, I would say, three methods of uh, control. Uh, first is uh, spraying. They are uh, spray against uh, uh, the Mediterranean fruit fly. I don't remember the pesticide. This is not my expertise. Uh, there are uh, traps to uh, to catch uh, to catch uh, the flies, and there is the the SIT sterile uh, insect uh, technique. Uh, you take the you grow the the flies. You distinguish between male and female. You take the the pop of the the male, and you pass them uh, in uh, under gamma radiation. You sterilize uh, the the male, and then you spread it either from airplane or from the from down. Uh, the female of the Mediterranean fruit fly that will uh, meet uh, a male, a sterile male, nothing will go in the uh, a second in generation and uh, this match is only once per life so by combining all the, those uh, ways of uh, uh, control uh, we can keep the the population of uh, the of the mediterranean fruit fly we can keep it uh, lower uh, we we can uh, we can uh, be uh, we can we can know if the population goes higher uh, by checking the traps. And then we know that there is a, there is a local problem and we, uh, we, we make, uh, we, in, we can intensify the treatment in uh, one village or two village according to what we find in, the, in our uh, uh, traps. Uh, to speak more about uh, plant protection issues, it is a, it is a big lecture. The next, the next lecture, okay. <laughs> um, somebody else with a question? Let, let me ask you, uh, Oluva, Mr. Oluvak Benga, I don't know, maybe Nigeria or Gabon. I don't know where are you from, but um, what do you recommend, Yoram, in, in high humidity areas? If, if not net houses, what are we doing? Uh, there, are, uh, many, uh, there are many uh, uh, construction that can uh, go uh, good in, uh, uh, in a tropical uh, area. Uh, for example, here, here we can see uh, a high greenhouse. Um, up here, there is a screen. There is a screen of uh, there is a net of insect-proof insect-proof net. Uh, so we get a protection from the rain and we get a very good ventilation since the the ventilation is uh, all over uh, along the the greenhouse. I, I, I didn't prepare uh, special photos, special slides to demonstrate 
uh, greenhouses that adapted for, for area with the high, uh, high humidity or high precipitation. But this is the idea to go for a, a higher uh, construction that, uh, uh, and to let the hot air uh, to go out through the open uh, uh, window. Now, it's, it's, it's very important to know what is the real limiting factor, because if you have many insects, and the insects, it is a, a real uh, uh, hazard for a real risk for your crop, so you have to go under uh, uh, insect-proof uh, uh, protection. But if you don't have uh, such a problem, if your crop can suffer several uh, uh, white flies, so uh, you can uh, allow yourself to grow without uh, insect proof uh, on the wells, and then you will have only protection from the rain, only a rain shelter. Uh, to answer more than this, uh, I need to have more photos and I don't have it handled uh, in my hands uh, now. Uh, thank you, Joram. Uh, there are some questions related to costs, investments. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's so, so different for each region. So I think this is difficult to give some answers, but Maybe uh, Luis is asking about how, how the farmers really get some support, if, if they get support from the government, or how, how is it working? You, you spoke about that a bit, but can you tell us a bit more? Oh, okay. Uh, well, it's, it's, a, it's a big question, Tom. There is, there is a support. Uh, which is uh, given directly to the farmer. Okay, there is a general support for agriculture. For example, the, the cost of water is subsidized. I pay in my house, I live in the city about uh, one hour from the Arava region. Uh, I pay about uh, one dollar per cubic meter. The farmer uh, pays uh, 30 cents. A cubic meter. So this is a kind of a support for, uh, for farming. Uh, a farmer that make an investment. Uh, now there is a criteria, there is a list, there is a list. Uh, let's say that if you want to grow, to build a greenhouse, to grow peppers for export. So is there, there is a law for supporting the export, there is a law for supporting investment in the periphery. The farmer can, can uh, apply for a support <coughs> and he, will, he can get, for a new investment, he can get 40% of his investment. Let's say a greenhouse uh, cost uh, uh, about uh, a big greenhouse cost, let's say 30,000 uh, uh, 30, $30, he can get 40% uh, so what what he has only to cover the 60% from his, uh, his uh, uh, pocket. For special event, special occasion, uh, like what I described, the price of the pepper, it was very important for the, for the government to, uh, to save the farmers, the, the pepper producers. So every farmer that make investment on another crop, except pepper, uh, he got 70%, 70, it is a, it is a huge uh, support uh, for, his, uh, for the, that farmer. Uh, there are farmers farmer that say, uh, I will be delighted to, uh, uh, to put money, but I don't have this 30%. I need only help for the running cost. So uh, the Ministry of Agriculture defined the flexibility and the, uh, in this case of the pepper crisis and they helped the farmer uh, with a, a budget, if not, not for the running cost, 
but they gave the guarantee for the bank that gave the special credit uh, to the uh, to the farmers. <coughs> uh, there are uh, there are import taxes, but again, this is a kind of a support in agriculture in general, not not directly to the uh, farmer. And this is for sure another lecture. <laughs> uh, well, friends, I, I think we, we are on time. We are really over time. So this is the time to, to finish. Uh, so first of all, uh, a very, very special thanks to Yoram very interesting and really we would like everybody to visit you in in Arava. Uh, what are you showing now? Oh, I just want uh, uh, to show my uh, this is my email uh, if you have uh, questions you can email me uh, okay. it is not uh, to write a master degree or a PhD okay. so I would be delighted to uh, to answer your question um okay you can write it down in the in the chat also um now uh, i i would also like to say thank you very much to dr goodman who joined us here uh, he's a bit in in the dark but he's here so thank you very much um with this, we are finishing this uh, show series of conferences. Uh, it was a program of three lectures. Uh, those who have not joined us, you can visit our YouTube page. You will find it under the playlist. Okay, this lecture, we will upload it in tomorrow for sure. Okay, so uh, most invited to to visit the page. Um, before we are saying bye-bye, uh, we would like to ask you some questions, okay? We built a poll. Uh, we would like to know what you think about those meetings because we will try to convince the people in Jerusalem of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, to, to give us the possibility to continue with those lectures. So I will send you the questions and please, please, please let us know your opinion. Okay, here you have it. We will be happy to hear your comments. You have to answer, okay? I hope those who have a computer, I don't know. It's important, so if you can, please. Another five seconds, we will end. Okay.
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We will go over it afterwards and we'll try, we'll try to answer your requests. Uh, friends, uh, you received the links of our Facebook. Okay, there you can find our uh, next uh, activities or, or the news. And, um, and I think we will say thank you again for everybody. Ora, thank you very much for being with me here. Uh, and from Israel, our shalom. We have today a very rainy day. So for all those who need water, here we are sending you a bit of our water and a bit of snow. They told us there might be snow in Jerusalem. So look at the news. It will be nice. So thank you very much. Shalom from Israel. And see you in the next opportunities. Shalom. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Shalom. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Good luck. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Shalom. Peace. Bye-bye. 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 Adiós. Hasta luego.